Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about non-repudiation, which by the way, is a word that I can never seem to pronounce correctly. So please bear with me in this video. Some of you may be old enough to know what this is. This is a check, or at least a picture of a check, because after all, no one uses checks anymore. But checks are like little handwritten documents that instruct a bank to make payment to the receiver. It's like a bank transfer, but in paper format. The check contains a few pieces of information, such as the person's name, the amount to be paid, and the date. Now, when you receive a check, you need to go over to the bank, hand it to them, and they will process the payment for you. But how does the bank know that the sender, the person who wrote the check, really was the one who wrote it? And how do they know the amount is correct? Well, the sender needs to sign their signature on the check first. This way, the bank can look at the signature on the check, compare it with the original one on record, then they can prove that the check was written by the sender. The sender will also write out the amount in words, making it impossible for anyone to say, just add another zero. This is a form of non-repudiation, proving that this check is from the sender and it hasn't been changed. When it comes to computing, non-repudiation is very similar. It's all about providing undeniable proof that something is from who they claim and that it hasn't been changed. This isn't just payments though. In the world of the internet, we can't trust anyone to be who they say they are. If you think about it, can you really be sure that that email is from the person it says? And how do you know a website you're visiting really belongs to the right company? Or that a document from your employer hasn't been modified in some way? Whatever it is, non-repudiation is critical to how we communicate in the world of cyber. So now we know a bit about what non-repudiation is and why we need it, let's see how it works. To achieve achieve non-repudiation, we need two main things. First, we need to verify the authenticity and we need to verify the integrity. We're going to start with verifying the integrity first. Now, the best way to do this is to use something called hashing. Hashing is a process of taking any strings of characters and changing them into another fixed length value. For example, if we take this simple message, we can run this through a hashing function and it will produce a fixed length value called a hash. Now look what happens if I change just a single character in this message. The hash completely changes, even though we only made a small change. This is great because we can use these hashes to prove whether any changes have been made to things like files, to emails, to web requests, and any other types of communication. Now that we understand how we can use hashes to prove the integrity, let's look at how we can prove the authenticity. Now to do this, we use signatures, but not the ones we wrote on our check. We use digital signatures. A digital signature is essentially an encrypted hash, and it works something like this. Let's say I have this document. I want to undeniably prove that this document was sent by me and it hasn't been changed. So I sign it with a digital signature. A couple of things happen when I do this. First, a hash is made of the document. Remember, if any changes are made to this document, no matter how small, the hash will no longer match. The next step is where the magic happens. The hash is then encrypted. We're gonna talk more about encryption later in this course, but for now, all you need to know is there are two keys involved. One key is for encrypting the data and this is called the private key. And the second key is for decrypting the data, and this is called the public key. So the hash of the document is encrypted using the private key that only I have. This creates the digital signature. Then I can send this file to say, Bob. When Bob receives this document, he also receives the digital signature. Remember, the digital signature contains the encrypted hash of the document. The only way to decrypt the hash is to use my public encryption key, which, as the name suggests, is available to anyone. It's public. If Bob is able to decrypt the hash with my public key successfully, this must mean the document has come from me. That's because only data encrypted with my private key can then be decrypted with the public key. And remember, only I have the private key. So this is how we prove that without doubt, this document has come from me. Now to prove the document hasn't been changed or tampered with in any way, Bob simply runs the same hashing function against the document and compares it with the hash from the digital signature. And if they both match, well, this proves the document hasn't been changed. So then, 
We've proved the document has come from me because we used the public key to decrypt the signature. Then we proved the document hasn't been changed by comparing the hash. This video is part of our Security Plus in 31 Days course. If you like this video, you are gonna love the full course. Not only does it cover each exam topic in simple and easy to understand videos, but it also provides hands-on labs. These labs guide you through practical tasks like creating Trojans, cracking passwords, and sending your own phishing emails, giving you real-world experience and making your studies that much more engaging and effective. It doesn't stop there though. You also get a copy of our Security Plus in 31 Days ebook which follows the course and covers each topic. You'll also get access to helpful downloads to support your learning, a private community where you can connect with fellow learners and exclusive discounts. It really is the complete package to guide you through your Security Plus journey. Check it out in the description below. This is just one example, but it demonstrates the need for non-repudiation in the modern world of digital communication. Without it, well, then we can't really trust any communication is from who they claim to be. We also can't trust that any communication hasn't been intercepted and tampered with before it's sent to us. Before we end, let's test your knowledge with a couple of quiz questions. Question one, which of the following best explains how a digital signature provides non-repudiation in digital communications. A, it encodes the entire message to prevent unauthorized access. B, it uses the sender's private key to confirm the sender's identity and authenticity. C, it compresses the message to reduce transmission time. Or D, it generates a backup of the document for data recovery purposes. The answer is B. It uses the sender's private key to confirm the sender's identity and authenticity. This is because the digital signature is created using the sender's private key, resulting in a unique signature. By decrypting it with the sender's public key, the sender's identity can be confirmed as only the corresponding private key could have possibly had generated the signature. Now let's look at one from our friends over at Bosin using their XSIM Max practice exams. Which of the following functions can you use a hash to perform? Is it A, verifying the integrity of a file? Is it B, authenticating a session? Is it C, creating a public key? Or is it D, encrypting a private key? And of course, the answer is A, verifying the integrity of a file. Now, if I scroll down, you'll see the explanation and feel free to pause and take a read. Again, that question was from Boson XM Max, which I highly recommend. You can find the link below in the description. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really does help this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching. <laughs>